Hello everybody! Today we're going to be playing with 4D rotations. Yes, so at the Qualia Research Institute we built this uh, tool called 4D Wave Control, <laughs> which is uh, has a number of purposes, but uh, I thought that it would be quite useful to just release it as soon as possible so that you can enjoy essentially the uh, benefits of being able to develop an intuition for how matrices work to apply projective transformations on objects, how you can interpolate between different matrices, and then how you can do this in three dimensions and four di dimensions, and also interpolate between them. And I think that uh, playing with this tool is a very great way of developing an intuition for how four-dimensional rotations work, um, which is maybe an important stepping stone in developing the methods to meditate yourself into a four-dimensional state of consciousness. <laughs> so the very first thing that I want you to do is open up the website that is linked in this uh, video, and you will see that there are uh, a number of elements in the screen. So first of all, you see, yeah, kind of these like cubic lattice at the center. Then you also see matrices, you know, matrix one, matrix two, then an interpolation bar, 4D rotations, and uh, various like speed dials <laughs> or levers. So the very first thing I want you to realize is that you can manipulate the lattice. You can drag and drop, right? Like you can move the lattice around just by using your mouse. That's number one. The second thing I want you to play with is look at the first element of the first matrix, you know, the very one at the very top. If you click it, you will notice it kind of like makes the cube a little bit more kind of like a rectangle. Okay, let's bring it back to one. Let's move, to, move on to the second element of the first matrix. So you have like one and zero in the first row. Turn that zero to one. Okay, now it's something, it's doing something different. This is a shear operation. So with matrices, even with just a two by two matrix, what this is doing is the following. It's taking a vector. In this case, it's a four dimensional vector because it's a four by four matrix. But if this was just a two by two matrix, it would be taking a two by two, uh, just a two uh, dimensional vector and applying a two by two matrix multiplication to it. What the matrix multiplication is really fundamentally doing is saying uh, the elements of your vector, where is it sending them to? Okay, so, you know, the first uh, row of the matrix essentially is shooting, you know, the value of your vector to a new value that will correspond to what is its value on the first axis. In other words, you're making a basis transformation um, of sorts where every vector is sent off to another vector. Now, when you're looking at an entire lattice, every point in the lattice is going to be sent over to a different point in space. So when you apply a you know, matrix multiplication to that lattice, what that means is that every point in the lattice is getting multiplied by that matrix and is being sent over somewhere else. And so you can encode things like rotations, translations, uh, shear operations, like the one that you just did, as well as weirder things uh, that you, know, you may not encounter in normal life, <laughs> uh, such as like symplectic transformations, uh, or various kind of like uh, uh, properties, like for example, sending um, a given angle, you know, by choosing the parameters very carefully. So I encourage you to just play a lot with, uh, with these matrices to develop an intuition for what do they do. But look, these are uh, four dimensional matrices. Um, and let me show you in what way. So in order to get there, let's first play with the interpolation axis or the interpolation lever, you will see that it transforms the cubic lattice into another cubic lattice. 
stays the same. It's cubic. Why? Because the extreme left of the interpolation slider corresponds to the first matrix multiplication. And it starts out with just ones in diagonals, and that means it's an identity matrix. In other words, you know, sending any vector through that first matrix <laughs> is going to do nothing to it. You're going to get the same vector back. Uh, so that's an identity matrix. Whereas the second matrix, you will notice that it's slightly different. You have a minus one on the first, on the second column, first row, and a one on the second row, first column. With this setup, you actually have done a rotation. This is actually a rotation along just one plane. So when you do the interpolation, you will see in what way the matrix is getting rotated from one to the other. Okay, so in this way, you will be able to essentially see how a certain projective transformation can turn into a different projective transformation through, in some sense, it's a shortest path. I mean, the shortest path here are literally just interpolations of the matrices. <laughs> so they're kind of like weighted averages of the matrices. So they might not actually be the, the shortest path, um, depending on your assumptions, but it's a pretty straightforward path. And so this way, you can see how one matrix multiplication turns into a different one, and what are the intermediate steps. So now, uh, you know, I encourage you to, you know, play with a top left three by three matrix <laughs> on both of these matrices. And that will apply, you know, like shear operations, rotation operations, scaling operations to the 3D structure. But where it gets really interesting is when you interact with the fourth row and the fourth column, because those correspond to the fourth dimension which in this encoding, um, it is done via changes in color. <laughs> so, well, you know, if you change the fourth value of the first row, and you have the interpolation slider, you know, all the way to the left, then you will see a change in color. It starts kind of like very rainbowy at first. Essentially, every dot gets spread out into a rainbow. And that is because every dot was actually a stand-in for a whole column of dots on the fourth dimension. But as soon as you turn any of those into a non-zero value, you will see how that axis essentially gets spread out. And now you just sort of like you have like a bunch of copies of the same cubical lattice, except spread out, and each of them of a slightly different color. And in this way, you can keep track of many different cubical lattices, each corresponding to a different height. Okay, so where it gets really interesting is when you start out to put the XY rotation. Well, that is just kind of like a standard 3D rotation. Uh, but then combine it with start ZW rotation. There is where you start to get 4D rotations. And the 4D rotations will be rotations along, you know, two axes that you can visualize in this three-dimensional space, and also two other axes, one of which is spatial and one of which changes color. And the color determines the height along the additional uh, fourth spatial dimension. You know, something that I really encourage you to play with is kind of like putting both speeds at something like 0.1 to 0.3, kind of in that range. And then just like play with the values of the matrices. Uh, maybe even the best is kind of like put the interpolation lever in the middle and then play with both matrices. And then see kind of like what that does to the transformation of one matrix into another. I highly encourage you to put on some music that you really enjoy. And then, you know, just looking at this for a long while, you know, <laughs> spend 15 minutes, spend an hour playing with this tool and listening to music. And something that you will notice is that it's kind of like going to train your visual field in order to start to develop an intuition for how these additional rotations work. And if you do this quite a bit, uh, you might notice that when you go to sleep, you will have these kind of 4D rotations maybe happening. <laughs> and I think this might be very important, kind of like 
training in order to then be able to eventually, you know, meditate yourself into four dimensional structures, which is a fascinating state of consciousness. But, you know, leaving that aside, I just think that this sort of tool is very helpful for understanding principles in linear algebra, all sorts of them. I mean, I'll just give you one, which is this concept of rank dimensionality. So um, there's this concept in linear algebra, which is what is the span of a set of vectors. And, you know, if you have a set of vectors, they're all very different, but then you have two copies of the same vector, you know, you're not going to increase what is the subspace, what is the, the range of values that you can arrive at by, uh, you know, making a linear combination of these vectors, that is a weighted sum of those vectors. Um, but even if the vectors are all different, you know, they may still span a relatively low dimensional space. And that is because if any of the vectors in your set can be described as a linear combination of the other vectors, then that means that vector is not adding anything new, right? Because you could already reconstruct it. And it doesn't matter if you, you know, add it into the mix in a set of, you know, <laughs> weighted sums, you're going to be able to, to span the same space as before. So what is that space is what is called uh, the rank uh, dimension uh, or rank space of a matrix. And so you can play with these matrices and you will notice that if the vectors uh, in the columns are actual, you know, linear multiplications of each other, weighted sums of each other, you will see how the matrix will collapse and will actually collapse into either just a 3D structure or something simple like a plane or even a line. It all depends on what is the space that the vectors span. And you know, that's just one. There's many other principles and concepts ranging from eigenvalues and eigenvectors uh, to like what a determinant is that just become very intuitive uh, as you play with this tool. So even though, you know, even if you're just an undergraduate, you know, taking courses in linear algebra, I highly recommend playing with this tool. It might just give you a, a huge advantage because you can visualize what is happening in the textbook. Uh, with that, yeah, just play with it. Uh, let us know what you think. Uh, we're excited to make a bunch of uh, things like this and, and, and share them and uh, see if we can increase the capability of our Quilia community. <laughs> and with that, well, thank you everybody. Infinite Bliss. I'll see you next time on another topic.